I have watched over the past few years as the justice of the Supreme Court has become injustice, as the equity has become inequity, as the neutrality has become bias. It has become so bad that you can guess before something goes to court exactly how each justice will vote. You can guess with fair degree of certainty some of the justices have been guilty over the years of accepting very, very large bribes. Alito and Thomas are two of them. I don't know all of them that have accepted bribes, but I know that those two have. And at every turn, the Republican Congress has refused to lift a finger. There are members who have gone up in front of Congress, like Mr. Whitehouse, literally that's his name, and have filed reports with evidence documenting the fraudulent behavior, documenting the lies, documenting the bribery from billionaires like Harlan Crow and others. And the Republicans, as a party, refused to, to do anything. So basically, the Supreme Court, which has until recently never had an ethics code, other than you can continue to be a Supreme Court justice as long as you do good. But when they finally put in a code, there is no tooth, let alone teeth. There is no fang, let alone fangs. There is no claw, let alone claws, that would make them be afraid of breaking that ethical code. In fact, with the Republicans protecting them, they are free to accept any and all bribes that they desire to accept and to vote however they want to vote, even if it contradicts, contradicts their sworn testimony at their hearings to become Supreme Court justices. For example, Roberts, Kavanaugh, Alito, Thomas all stated that they would not agree with a president having unfettered power and immunity. And yet, all of them, those two, four plus two more, that's six, all voted with their words to give the president, which is currently Biden, almost unlimited protection from anything they do that can be construed as being part of not just their core duties, but anything within their um, unique scope of power. Which means, if they come up with some cockamamie excuse, if the president, that is, comes up with a cockamamie excuse as to why a political rival during election year needs to be snuffed, they can get away with it. That means that if the president decides that he's irritated by the protesters, he can have the military or the Secret Service or the FBI or the NSA shoot into the crowd. Now, there is some ambiguity because the Supreme Court is a court of review, not first decision. And so they have returned to the district court decisions on what limitations there might possibly be, but they have actually mapped out some areas for which Trump is immune. We can only hope that the district courts will act swiftly, decisively, and in the best interests 
of this nation of all the people, not just one party, not just one faction, to protect us all from tyranny. Because our founding fathers did admit that the greatest danger in our nation is not attacks from outside, however scary they may be. It is the attacks from inside, the domestic treason, the treachers who seek to usurp our government to turn it into a Christian republic or to turn it into a Christian theocracy or whatever other viewpoint they might have. Our founding fathers were very careful to separate church and state. And yet, when decisions have come before the court that were related to Christian beliefs, and I was raised as a Christian, and I hold many of those beliefs dear in my heart, they would vote for the half of the population that is Christian instead of the whole population. And some of them have even said that that is what they will do, that they will not vote according to the law of the Constitution, but according to their religious beliefs, especially Alito. Now, Chief Justice Roberts is always very careful to word his decisions, his opinions in such a way as to make himself look like reluctantly in support of the decisions of the more radical conservative judges. But he sides with them over and over and over again. He is a feckless chief justice who should not be chief justice. Clarence Thomas was the, and, and if you look at Clarence Thomas's history, his three years of uh, experience as a lawyer, two years of experience as a judge before being nominated to and accepted to the Supreme Court, that's it. Five years of legal experience. Plus he worked for, my, my, guess who? Monsanto. If that doesn't tell you something, you're not paying attention. Now, I'm not picking on him because he's black. I'm picking on him because he is not a good man. Here is a man who made a public statement that he was considering stepping down because the amount of money he was earning as a justice was not enough. And suddenly, money flooded into his coffers. Suddenly, he was receiving lots of donations of many different kinds. So we have Alito, who has admitted that his allegiance is to his religious beliefs, not to the Constitution. We have Clarence Thomas, who has demonstrated time and again by not reporting bribes that he has received, especially bribes that violate the rules about what can be accepted as a gift and what is not allowed, and who has publicly requested more money by saying he's going to step down because he's not earning enough, who is, along with Alito, guilty of making decisions based on his personal beliefs rather than protect the Constitution. Now, I have watched in my 57 years of life as the Constitution has been chipped away at and executive powers have grown, and Congress has gone from bad to worse. I have watched and gnashed my teeth because either the Democrats or the Republicans would make the government shut down because they didn't want to compromise. Now, I understand sometimes bills come before the court that are absolutely, sorry, not the court, the Senate, Congress, that are utterly ridiculous or utterly 
gigantic in proportions. One to two days before a vote has to be given, and nobody has time to read it. And things are snuck into those bills, those omnibus bills often, which give special preference to certain companies and individuals and protection as well. Like when Monsanto was protected by the bill that was supposed to be for the ACA. Somebody snuck in a clause that protected Monsanto. I'm pretty sure it was the ACA bill. It may have been a different one. And now we have the German scumbag company Bayer that has taken over Monsanto, and they're even worse than Monsanto is, from what I hear. But I'm digressing. Gorsuch is also guilty of voting based on religious beliefs. Now, I understand we all have religious beliefs or no religious belief. We all have ethics, however warped and twisted they may be. But when you sign on to be a Supreme Court justice, your job is to defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, not to promote your religion not to promote the ideology of the rich who are bribing you or the agenda of the rich who are bribing you. That is not what you were hired for. And therefore, because with the exception of, and this is very predictable, the case with Rahimi in which everybody, to one degree or another, did not agree with Clarence Thomas. You see, Rahimi had assaulted his wife and threatened her with her uh, with death if she told the police. He had gone around scaring people by shooting off his gun when they didn't do what he wanted. Apparently, he was a, allegedly he's a drug dealer. Now, this is all alleged. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But allegedly he did all these things, and so a federal judge said he had abrogated his right to carry a weapon. And yet he continued to do that and continued to threaten people with his gun and scare people by shooting it off when he didn't get his way. Now, I don't, I'm not aware that he actually hurt anybody other than his wife. And I'm pretty sure that his kids were in the car when he did that. Although, I could be wrong. But in my opinion, he should have been arrested. He should have had that gun taken away from him. He should have been jailed. And it should never have been accepted by the Supreme Court to discuss it. But to one degree or another, Clarence Thomas said, there's no precedent. There's nothing in the history that says that he can't have his gun. Every other Supreme Court justice, to one degree or another, disagreed with him. And he was voted down. Um, and some of them, like, um, what's uh, Judge uh, Justice Barrett? I think that's her last name. Amy, whatever. She was so offended and upset by his willingness to allow somebody that dangerous to have access to a gun. that she had words for Clarence Thomas. Justices of the Supreme Court, I indict you on high crimes of treason, of abandoning the Constitution, of abandoning the Bill of Rights, of promoting one religion over all other religions, or rather I should say one sect, of promoting to excess the private interests of people with huge amounts of money who are never, ever, ever going to be satisfied because they are megalomaniacs and have or, and or have other kinds of neuroses and psychoses that make them incapable of accepting that enough is enough. These are people 
who will destroy the beauty of this country. They will pollute this country and they will get away with it because the Supreme Court's, court's justices by a 6-3 to three majority will protect them. So Sam, Robert, Clarence, Amy, and the two other jackasses, um, people who pretend to be court justices of the Supreme Court, I indict all of you. You are treachers. You have violated your sacred duty as Supreme Court justices. I demand that the government of America prosecute you with all due haste and full force and remand you to a place of keeping such that the rich cannot protect you, put you in a supermax, perhaps. I'm sure there would be people that would be very happy to see you there. And if that's not enough, if that's not something that's be going to be carried out, Mr. Biden, President Biden, well, according to some of the legal experts that I've seen online, you now have a green flag to assassinate Trump. Now, I'm not saying that you should. I am very much opposed to murder. However, if Trump gets into office... The man is, at best, a narcissist, and at worst, a psychopath. Either way, he is not to be trusted. And the fact that the Republicans have been protecting him and protecting the Supreme Court over and over and over again, the Judge Cannon, who should be disbarred, along with those six Supreme Court justices, has been protecting him. And other people up and down the line have been protecting him, all because of religious Zealotry, because they believe his lies, the man is incredibly dangerous for the future of this country. I firmly believe that. So, President Biden, please look carefully at the Supreme Court's decision and take appropriate action to secure the future of this nation as a democracy, as a republic, as a place where State and religion are separated. A secular nation. Now, if I have to choose between the crazies that are wanting to turn this country into a theocracy, the militant Christians, which is an oxymoron, because Jesus certainly not, sorry, would not, approve of militancy in Christianity. And anybody who looks at Trump and says, oh, there's a good Christian leader, has scales over their eyes. The scales of the devil have blinded them. This is a man who has cheated on his wife many times, who bribed a porn star after having an affair with her to keep her quiet, which didn't work for it very well, did it, and was found guilty. He is now a felon. This is a man who told one of his heads of defense that he asked if, can the protesters outside be shot? This is a man, when he was on the campaign trail, and it was very hot one day, he said, I don't care about you, I just want your votes, to his constituency. And they laughed. But he was not joking. This is a man who is so full of himself that he will tear down the nation and rebuild it so it will look like North Korea or Iran except Christian instead of Muslim. So I indict I indict the Republican Party. Every public a party member in Congress and, and who has repeatedly Barred progress on prosecuting justices for the crimes they have committed. Every one of them I indict on crimes of treason. Every member of the House that has done that I indict on crimes of high treason. 
every one of you who has worked with the Supreme Court's majority, with the cabal of the millionaires and billionaires who are filling your money pouches and giving you gifts that you shouldn't be getting, I indict you all. You will, as a group, not be ascending to heaven. I know the difference. My grandfather was a minister. My uncle was a minister. My sister and her husband and my um, are active in Christianity. I have a cousin and her husband who are very active in Christianity. I understand the difference between people who are working for God and the people who are working for Satan. You almost entirely are working for Satan, and you don't even know it, perhaps. You have sold your souls. You will reap your rewards in hell. I indict you all. All the justices who have been protecting Trump, all the governors, all the people, all the politicians who have been working to get elected just so that they can make sure that Trump is elected by denying any decision other than that Trump won, I indict all of you for treason. I heard what you said. You publicly admitted that was your goal, was to be elected so that you could make sure that Trump won. I indict you all for high treason. This conspiracy is the largest conspiracy that I'm aware of in American history. Not the first, but the largest and the most threatening to the future of this nation as a democracy, a secular republic. You are all guilty of treason. I would say that may God have mercy on your souls, but I don't, I don't think you deserve that. I realize that there are people who are not going to agree with me. I invite you to look at the evidence dispassionately and carefully and ask yourself if it's one thing for a nation to become a theocracy if there are checks and balances in place. But the people in the positions of power are taking away those checks and balances. And trust me when I say that if you dig deeply and you look carefully and you open your eyes, you will see this will not be a theocracy of God. No. The people who are leading this movement of militant Christians are people who are after power. People who are Angry, hateful, anti-Christians, anti-Christs. They will turn America into a farce of a Christian theocracy. You will look back on this day and you will say, how could I not have seen? Except for those of you who want to take part in the bloodshed, who want to take part in the abuses, who want the power. I know I can't change your minds at all because you've already decided that greed is more important than anything. Power and wealth is what you want. But for the rest of you, I beg you, look carefully. We are at a very important point in American history. We are two years from the 250th anniversary of this country and next year could be the end of this dem democratic experiment if you stand behind Trump and the Republicans the Republican Party that is packed with racists and zealots and money hungry people it doesn't matter if it's Trump or Cruz or Vance or DeSantis they're all in it for money and power, in my opinion. This message is, my opinion, based on the evidence that I can see 
on the evidence of 57 years of life minus the years that I don't remember anything about. I hope you will look deeply and carefully. Thank you for watching. This is the worst 4th of July of my life.